Sarah Rux, and for those of you who don't know me, and I'm the curator here at the Portsmouth Historical Society. And with this space we use for changing exhibits. This year our exhibit's about John Paul Jones. Some of you have come to some of my other talks about John Paul Jones. This is my last talk about John Paul Jones. But next month, on the 29th of October, we'll have Dennis Robinson um, speaking. Um, he'll speak over at the Discover Portsmouth Center, followed by a tour of the exhibit uh, about collecting. Most of his talk is about collecting Jonesiana, things about Jones. And we have things from his collection over in this section. Um, the Portsmouth Historical Society is a membership organization. For those of you who aren't members and would like to be, we do have membership forms. And we would welcome you as members. The, um, we have been collecting Portsmouth things and telling Portsmouth stories since 1920. So the, um, I'm going to get right into my John Paul Jones. Now this, is, this talk is quite different for those of you who've been to my other talks. Um, this one's very different because it has music. This is linked quite nicely to the Sea Music Festival, which is happening this weekend around town. Um, after my talk, you could go straight across the street to the Discover Portsmouth Center and listen to um, groups performing sea music over there. Um, they're, um, I think they're doing um, ballads, folk ballads is one of the programs there. And then there is both sides of the pond, which may end up being there because it's scheduled for Warner House. Um, so there will be sea music around. Um, so my, my talk has a lot of sea music in it here. And I'm going to start with the tunes. This is a tune. There's on my um, first panel up there, it has a Scottish ballad. You've heard of John Paul Jones, have you not? Have you not? Um, and it's a very <coughs> long tune. And it seems that no one has recorded this song in recent memory. Um, certainly, I could find nothing, I could not find a recording of it. Um, so it's to the tune of this song called Ye Jacobites by Name, which is a song, an anti, the Jacobites were the people who, Bonnie Prince Charlie and, and so forth, who were trying to take over Scotland and throw out the King of England um, and reinstate the Stuart family. And this was an anti-Jacobite song. The words to it were written by um, the most used words by Robert Burns, although it was written um, earlier than that. It was traditional. I'm just going to play a little bit of the, the tune. Imagine the you know the song, the John Paul Jones words to that tune, and that was um, a Scottish ballad, and that's kind of the theme of our program here. That in, surprisingly, <coughs> many of the songs, plays, um, everything except the movie, um, and, and some a few American songs, um, have come from Scotland and England about Jones. And he is very much a hero over there in Scotland. Um, so we have, um, and then the recordings I have for the next few songs are songs, um, The Stately American was a, Scot a Scottish song. And these, the next four were sung by um, Cliff Haslam and John Miller. And it's a recording from the Smithsonian Folk Collection. Um, a wonderful collection you can go on and download for small, relatively small fees. Um, some great folk music um, collected and in the, at the Smithsonian. And this was performed, these songs were performed at Mystic Seaport in 1976. So 1976 is our bicentennial and the songs about John Paul Jones were, um, it, you know, they're looking for songs of our hero and they have to go to Scotland to find them. The first one, The Stately American, is about um, an incident in 1778 um, when he is going to Whitehaven, before he burns up Whitehaven, and you go on the map over here, and he's going to the Irish Sea in the Ranger. And the Ranger um, 
sailing fast. Um, it does say the Rangers are the fastest sailing vessel ever, which is not true. Um, but our own Portsmouth Ranger is sailing along and eludes a British man of war. Three, four, Jones um, ship and the Ranger, they go along over and they burn down Whitehaven. And on the way back from Whitehaven, they had spied, the British man of war that they spied was the Drake. So Jones decides to go after the Drake, after he's burned Whitehaven, visited the Earl of Selkirk, got the silver, that famous story of stealing the silver. Um, he then goes to get the Drake. So this is about the Battle of the Drake, um, which is the first time an American ship captured a British man of war. What's that, what's that on the starboard bow from our mast end descried? It is an English man of war, our gallant captain cried. Bear down, bear down on his port bow, we'll give to him the broadside, and we'll let him know that John Wall Jones is king of the Irish tide. It was 11 o'clock in the forenoon when we ranged up alongside. Logged yard after yard, our map bows we then destroyed. Come on, come on, you cowardly curs, was heard above the din. If you have brass for outward show, we've got good steel within. For five long hours the battle raged, was furious and fast. Paul Jones, he led us in the van, and we conquered them at last. It was four o'clock in the afternoon, the English flag rolled out. Well done, me boys, Paul Jones, he cried, to the battle of renown. So that song, um, some people think that that song was composed in American composition but it was collected in Scotland, and it appeared, um, all of, versions of all of these appeared in a book of Scottish ballads, English and Scottish ballads, um, called the Roxborough Collection. Um, these are in volume seven of that collection, showing you how many songs that were being collected. And it was um, published in 1895. 
So in the late 19th century, there was a lot of interest in collecting um, the, the ballads and songs from both England and Scotland and Ireland, um, the culture of the, so that they would be preserved. Um, we had similar things going on here um, with people going and collecting songs in the Appalachians. Um, so it was um, something that was a, a, a sign of the times. And we had um, here in the New York Times, um, Arthur Goodman published um, songs about John Paul Jones, um, citing the Roxborough collection and putting the verses for some of the songs um, in the New York Times. Um, he did this, um, the Roxborough collection was 1895. He's publishing in the New York Times in 1901, just after Buell's biography was published about John Paul Jones. And while somebody like biographer Samuel Elliott Morrison said Buell's biography should well be classified as a novel, it was incredibly popular. And so we had John Paul Jones and, um, and, 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 and Fitterman in his song article says, Buell's illustrious biography. So you could tell that he really liked it. Um, but we have Buell's biography and we have Teddy Roosevelt um, promoting John Paul Jones. And this is just before we go and dig him up and bring him back. Um, so we're, re, we're, re, we're bringing back these songs that were written in 1778 and 1779, the same time as the prints that we have in the exhibit were made. So the songs were the, these are the popular culture of the time. They have the prints, which are broadsides and taverns and, and various things, and they, and they have the songs to go along with them. So then we have the Battle of the Serapis and the Bon Homme Richard, which generates quite a number of songs and still does, but in 1779, when it happened, we have, this is um, hurrah for John Paul Jones. He is, and you'll hear the structure of this song is quite different from the ones we've heard because it's a Dutch song. And Dutch school children, um, in, in 1976 when this was translated, Dutch school children were still singing this. I don't know if they are now. And there was a version of it in French. And it's about John Paul Jones at the ser arriving with the Serapis into Texel <coughs> in, in um, the Netherlands. And so it's how happy the Dutch are to see him. And it sounds like a children's song. Here comes Captain John Paul Jones, sing his praise in Kiro's tongue. Hmm? He is a bold American. His ship went down not far from land. Had we him here, had they him there, Okay, so the next one 
It is thought to be an American um, composition, but was collected in England. Um, and it, the tune is similar to the tune for Sweet Betsy from Pike, and a tune used with many 18th century songs. And this, this one is, uh, there's a version of this um, in the Roxborough Chronic um, Collection. Um, this is, uh, I think, a more American version, but the, um, it talks about an American frigate, uh, frigate of fame, that's the Richard, the Richard by name, and it has, um, it has several different names for Pearson, the captain, and it has, um, we get down and a number of people are dead, and different versions of the song have different numbers of people dead. Um, so this is the song that was sung in 1976, the version of it. Frigate, frigate of fame, with guns mounted, fuzzy, the Richard by name, was cruising the channel of Old England, with a noble commander, Paul Jones was the man. We had done so long before we did a spy, a large forty four and a twenty close by. Well, man could both seamen and plenty of store, they quickly pursued us from Old England shore. At the hour of twelve, Pearson came alongside, with a loud speaking trumpet, whence come you, he cried, bringing me an answer I've hailed you before, for at this very instant a broadside I'll pour. Paul Jones, he exclaimed, my brave boys, we won't run, let every bold seaman stand close to his gun, when the broadside was fired by those brave Englishmen, like bold buckskin heroes, we returned it again. We fought the main glasses, eight glasses so hot, till sixty bold seamen lay dead on the spot. Seventy more they lay bleeding in gore, while the pieces of cannon like thunder did roar. One gunner got frightened, to Paul Jones he came. Our ship, she's a sinking, her sight but a frame. Then Paul Jones exclaimed in the height of his pride, If we can't do better, we'll sink alongside. Our shot flew so fast that they could not stand. The proud flag of Britain was forced to come down. Now, my brave boys, we have taken a prize, a large forty-four and a twenty likewise. God bless the widows who shortly must weep For the loss of their husband, no sunk in the deep In the house of old Paul Jones, his sword in his hand Who stood up in action and gave the command Well, so that, uh, that is the early, those are the early songs about John Paul Jones. Um, what I don't really have recordings of, um, the other songs in the collection had to do with John Paul Jones' The Pirate. Um, clearly English and Scottish songs. Um, Jones was terrorizing um, the English, the Irish Sea, and up around, sailed all the way around Scotland. Um, so there are songs about him being a pirate in England, and he was often um, a, a pirate hero. In Scotland, it's very hard for him not to be a hero. Uh, he it was from Scotland. They are slightly anti-British. Um, certainly in this period, they were a little more anti-British. And so a, a person from their own homeland who's out terrorizing the British, even if he did, did maybe terrorize parts of Scotland too, not too bad. But they do write about him as a pirate in some of the songs that don't seem to have current recordings. So we go on through the 19th century, and I find that um, in the United States, we don't really have any songs and plays about John Paul Jones that are where we recorded, um, you know, written down that we did them. Um, but we do have biographies. So we have John um, Henry Sherburne's biography, um, and we have um, um, Alexander Slidell McKenzie's biography, 1825, 1845, um, respectively. And we also have some fiction 
We have the pilot by James Fenimore Cooper, which Jones is the hero, but there's this other hero, um, Tom, what's his name, Tom Longstocking, something like that. He has the hero, the real hero of the pilot. Um, so in England, they took James Fenimore Cooper's um, um, novel and turned it into a play. And there, the play had, um, it was at the Adelphi Theater in London. It was written by Edward Fitzball, and he wrote lots of popular plays in England. It was um, a naval burletta was one of the types of plays. It's also classified as a melodrama that you can get the, and it, and it ran for 200 performances in, uh, oh, Long Tom is the hero, the Long Tom Coffin. Um, and the, so it has the pilot, Lieutenant Barnstable, Captain Brocliffe, all the people who are um, characters in the, um, the novel by um, James Fenimore Cooper. However, Fitzball has turned all of the good Yanks, all of the like heroes of the play, into good Englishmen. And the ones who are the villains are Yankees. So he's sort of turned it around to make it popular in England. So we go, we, we quickly go up to the publication of Buell's biography and Teddy Roosevelt's interest in Jones, reviving some of the ballads that we just heard. And then we don't really get anything here in America about Jones and performance um, point of view until the 1959 movie. So we virtually go from 1900 to 1959 without Jones being subject of plays and songs and so forth. So we're just, we're not playing the movie. Many of you came to see it when we showed it, um, but we are gonna have the theme. We had to turn it down. All right, so you can tell by listening to this how different this is from the Scottish ballads. Heroic music. All the might of America. <laughs> and and it's, it's during the Cold War. Um, America has won World War II. It is a time of pride for America and also a time of fear with the competition with the Soviet Union. And John Paul Jones is our most enduring naval hero. Uh, the gentleman singing the songs at Mystic in 1976 commented that some of the other American Revolutionary War naval heroes like Barry might have been better Seaman, although I have my doubts, um, but um, John Paul Jones is the most enduring of our heroes. So I have a whole sound, I'm not, a, and I listened to most of the soundtrack yesterday. The soundtrack, I actually by itself, <coughs> is less dated than the movie, I think. Oh, except that, that having seen the movie now eight or ten times, over the past three years. Starts from our roots, being small as a right. piper, to where we were at as a nation. Right. Symphonic music. And, and I have to, I have to go backwards a little bit here. To um, I left out the um, Agnes Huntington playing John Paul Jones in an opera. It was opera comique called Paul Jones in New York. It was um, based on a because I don't have a recording player. Um, it was, we ha over here we have a picture of Agnes and we have this, the um, score in our exhibit. 
for the uh, Gura Tamid. And it was, it bore absolutely no resemblance to Jones's career. It had been a French opera called Circoum. And the um, person who wrote it, um, brought it, they translated it into English. It had no, it's, it's about battles and so forth. It has nothing to do with Jones whatsoever. Just the hero. And he's dressed um, in, um, she's dressed in her Jones costume. She has a couple of different Jones costumes. Um, she was very tall, beautiful, um, is famous in some of these corseted photos, because it is 1890. Um, and and she, then she gets, what happens to her is she marries um, the, um, a lawyer whose name is Paul Denon, Drennan Kravath, who was famous for inventing the Kravath system of running a law firm that's still used today. So that was an interesting little tidbit. But she married him, and um, he was um, he was famous for having pursued, I mean, he, he pursued her um, originally. And he was, in the 90s, he was de described as a devoted lover, a strapping fellow with sleeping mustachios of dark brown. And he impatiently climbed a 20-foot ladder of a steamer Teutonic to meet his lady. Um, however, their marriage didn't go so well. Uh, they were married for 32, well, they were together for 32 years, and then they separated. Not exactly sure when she died, and they had one daughter. And the um, who's who of American women in 1914 stated that she was opposed to women's suffrage, which you think was strange. A woman who was out there dressed as a man, performing as a man in a play like John Paul Jones, to then be against women's suffrage. It's a little strange. But she married this very rich man and did quite well. All right, so sorry that I got that out of order. All right, so we are, we've got our 59, our big symphonic music. And you see that, and music does get more symphonic in the 20th century. Um, all of the different things that I have here are much bigger music than the um, sort of bar songs and ballads that people were singing in their homes and communities in the 18th century. So we go from 1959 to about 1993. There's a play called The Admiral Jones, and this was in Scotland, in Dumfries and Galloway. And The Admiral Jones um, is a radio play um, written by David McCain, who was a Scottish playwright. And in the plot for The Admiral Jones, Jones is in Paris dying of nephritis and enjoying the period of remission and is holding a party in the garden of his lodgings for a few friends, including the US ambassador. And they're urging him to make a will that will have none of it. And he will have none of it. Why should a man who has led his charmed life and has enjoyed about good health think of wills? A man who came from nowhere to command ships of war for the fledging fledgling navy of the rebellious American colony and Catherine the Great's Imperial Russian naval navy. He reveals he's on the brink of his greatest command, having survived a lifetime of penny-pinching bureaucrats and devious politicians. But it's clear that his body will be his final betrayer. He will die, his will made, three days later. And the play is an attempt to reconstruct that garden party in which he talked wonderfully. We think this garden party never happened, but um, they did it on the, the 201st anniversary of when it was supposed to have happened. And it was, then it went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is um, a festival, Edinburgh has a big fe cultural festival every year, and there's a Fringe Festival, which is kind of like off, off, off Broadway, um, that goes along with it. And so this was in the Fringe Festival and awarded a Fringe First Award. Um, it's played in real time in two acts, runs for 90 minutes, um, and there's a reference in the play to Portsmouth, Virginia as the home of the <laughs> ranger rather than Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So, um, how sad. Also, and then we get in 2002, we finally talk, get to talk about an American production here in Portsmouth. There was a new stage production called John Paul Jones. It was played in to over 2,000 people at the Music Hall, at different times, obviously. Music Hall doesn't hold 2,000 people. It was done by the New Hampshire Theater Project, 
and was primarily for New Hampshire school children. I think that represents a difference between the Scottish English view of Jones and the American view of Jones. In America, we often think of Jones as educational. Learning about Jones is educational. Children should learn about Jones the hero. We don't so much think about Jones as adult entertainment. Whereas in, in England and Scotland, they have a lot of drinking songs and things. <laughs> so they, they view Jones as a hero, pirate, um, you know, what have you, but they, but they do view it as adult subject matter, um, which is a, a fair dis difference from how we view him in the U.S. Um, so this, in, in 2002, there also is a new musical at the Edinburgh Festival. Now this one's not on the fringe, this is in the main festival. Julian Wagstaff is a well-known um, composer, writer, um, and he is trying to raise money to take this musical to the West End in London. So we may yet see this musical, um, although this was a, 2002 is going to be a while ago now, but these things take a while. And the plot of this one has um, Jones coming to visit his sister Janet Taylor, and another prominent character here is Robert Burns. Now this is so Scottish. How can you have a Scottish play without Robert Burns? Um, it turns out Robert Burns was from the same area that Jones is from, the west part of Scotland. Um, he's from Ayr. And in Ayr, um, Burns was born in 1761. So he's a teenager when Jones is running around um, terrorizing Scotland. And so he remembers people moving their furniture inland to keep it safe from Jones. And alarm parties being set up to uh, warn people about Jones coming. And Burns is pretty sympathetic to the American Revolution. One of the first songs he wrote was about the Boston Tea Party and Philadelphia. So he, um, he does have some sort of logical connection to Jones, although this is totally fictitious. But it tells the story of Jones pretty accurately. So I'm just going to do two songs from it. Um, and the, when you, the whole, I read the whole little screen thing and listened to all the songs, and it is fairly accurate. I think that's the other thing about some of the Scottish versions, is that while they're setting them in, in fictional settings, they are a little more, um, less subject to the myths of Buell, I would say, um, and a little more truthful to Jones' actual career. First song.
can see, I, I would say this is this musical is a bit of a cross between Gilbert and Sullivan and Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> um, so, um, and this is the last sad song um, for um, the, um, the end of the musical where Jones dies. A little bit reminiscent of a scene in the movie where he dies. Thank you. 
Johnny Horton song on it. And it says I just watched John Paul Jones, but now I want to watch John Paul Jones again. I'm going to replay it. Maybe it gets me to replay. Um, yes, replay. Yes. Um, I'm going to turn it around in a minute when I get the video up. So now we are able to easily make our own audio and video culture. And the um, You'll find, though, Johnny Horton's song about John Paul Jones, it sounds remarkably like the Battle of New Orleans. He, I think he had one song in him, and that's it. But it also incorporates a lot of the myths, like John Paul Jones is a pirate, which you should know better. But I'm going to make it full screen and turn it around. It's a cute YouTube. And if you, you can come up closer if you can't see it. I think this song is from the 50s. About the same time as the Battle of New Orleans. So Alan's planning to put um, our series of talks about John Paul Jones, parts of them on YouTube. So we can now use some of the music as backgrounds for our own YouTube. Don't hold your breath though. <laughs> this is a catchy tune too. And we have this poster in our exhibit. He has a lot of things in this YouTube that we have in our exhibit. End of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the concert. And any questions? 